John Steele was born in New York City in 1921, but raised in France and Spain. As a result, he grew up trilingual, being fluent in English, French, and Spanish before returning to the United States as a teenager. John's family was full of many accomplished singers and actors, especially his mother, and as such, he was exposed to the arts. As a young boy, he even performed, if only briefly, on Broadway as one of the dead-end kids, and he would occasionally sing on the radio when the opportunity arose. But don't get the idea that he was some delicate indoors type. John was an avid hunter and fisherman, even as a young man. He attended private school in Florida, where he had the rather enviable task of catching enough largemouth bass each week to feed the entire student body and the faculty at Friday's fish dinner, a job in which he both excelled and relished. He was also unwaveringly patriotic and destined to become a distinguished veteran of three wars. He served a brief stint in the Coast Guard as a signalman before transferring to the Marine Corps. In World War II, he fought as a U.S. Marine on Guadalcanal, amongst other places, making sketches of what he saw, which included dead bodies, some of which were good enough to occasionally make it into a Leatherneck magazine. John began his early art training at the Art Students League in New York City and the Art Center School in Los Angeles, California, on the GI Bill. John's art must have needed some development because years later, when he was an established artist, he reveled in telling a story of one of his early art center teachers who said, John, you should quit and open up a hamburger stand. He would later volunteer to serve again during the Korean conflict, which interrupted his art school education. He would end up in the Chosen Reservoir, where he was to become one of the Chosen Frozen. When he returned, he kicked off his career, and he did it in a big way. One of his early design efforts was working on the Matterhorn at Disneyland. This success led to other Disney projects. He also got involved in the movies by designing and drawing the storyboards for many large-scale motion picture productions, including Ben-Hur, Spartacus, and Mutiny on the Bounty. He also did design and drafting work for Northrop Aviation. During the 60s, he painted illustrations for the covers of Ravel models, Mostly, but not exclusively, of ships. His first job for Ravel actually was a Fokker triplane, the Red Baron's plane. Ravel's head artist made some modifications to John's artwork only to bring in the color palette in a line with Ravel's preferences. John resented this, but Cachetti would admit that he actually found John a very strong artist and had great respect for his work. When the Vietnam War started, John accepted invitational orders to serve with the Marine Corps as a combat photographer and artist and serve five tours of duty, producing thousands of photographs and sketches for the Department of Defense, some of which have been published in numerous books and are even on display in Washington, D.C. His military decorations include the Bronze Star, the Navy Cross, and three Purple Hearts. He was a lifetime member of the Marine Corps Combat Correspondents Association, the Joe Rosenthal chapter in San Francisco. And if you didn't know, this is the photograph that Joe Rosenthal was famous for. In 1970, John returned to America and made his home in Northern California. With his work for Ravel done, he began to work for Monogram and Lindbergh, and I believe some of his work graced Aurora's box tops as well. After this, he began a series of works about his life's passion wildlife. He also worked for Skin Diver Magazine as the cover illustrator and a contributing writer, as John was an active skin diver. John worked extensively with Pacific Press, Scripture Press, and the Southern Baptist Convention on hundreds of religious illustrations that are still being used, such as the Bible Story series and Uncle Arthur's Bedtime Stories. Many of his works are still in print and still for sale. John passed away in 1998 leaving behind a true man's man legacy in deeds and a true artist's legacy in military, wildlife, and model box art. <laughs>